Welcome back to MPT. Today I'm talking about three types of transmit receive modules, also called TR modules. As you will see, they are essential for the vast majority of phased arrays. Be sure to watch to the end and then download my white paper link below. It has several visual examples and the benefits and drawbacks of the three types of TR modules. Get your product to market faster with a custom phased array solution from MPT Corp. Your first question should be, well, what is a TR module? Well, a TR module performs the functions in a phased array that are required just before the signal leaves the array and goes out of the antenna element in the array. It performs the function, obviously, of the T part in TR module, stands for transmit, so it performs the transmit functions. It also re performs the receive functions, which is the R in TR module. Typically, the transmit and receive modules have in the transmit portion a very high power amplifier. Those may be made of gallium nitride, gallium arsenide, or even silicon germanium semiconductor materials. And those high power amplifiers are, are responsible for amplifying the level of the signal that's being sent out of the array to the required level uh, for the system. Also in the transmit path, there is a thing often called a driver amplifier. It takes the low level signal entering the phased array and amplifies it to the level required by the high power amplifier. In the receive section, there's normally a function called a low noise amplifier. In fact, pretty much every TR module has a, a low noise amplifier in it. And it's responsible for amplifying the receive signals. It has a special characteristic of having low noise performance in its amplification. So it doesn't add much noise to the receive signal. And then in front of that LNA, between the LNA and the antenna is often a component called a limiter or a switch or something protecting the LNA from being permanently damaged by energy that leaks into that LNA from external, uh, external uh, sources or from the high power amplifier itself. After the, the LNA and, and before the driver amplifier, there is this part of the circuit called a common leg circuit. And that's where the phase shift functions occur that steer the antenna beam. And that's also where the amplitude variation functions are contained that vary the level of the signal that's transmitted and the level of the signal that's received. Those are the main electrical functions that are inside the TR module. Of course, there are many others, but those are the main uh, functional block um, items that are inside of the TR module. So now that you know what a TR module is, I want to go into those three types. The first type is a microelectronic hybrid TR module. It's characterized by having often a ceramic substrate that could be uh, an aluminum nitride substrate. It could be a low temperature co-fired ceramic substrate. It could also be an aluminum, nit uh, aluminum oxide substrate, often called alumina. And on that substrate, that ceramic substrate, are placed these uh, integrated circuit functions, the HPA, the, the low noise amplifier, the limiter, the driver, the common leg circuit, and they're interconnected using wire bonds in a construction technology called hybrid microelectronics. This technique is very common for, for extreme uh, reliability and extreme performance TR modules used in applications such as satellites and military radar systems. Uh, these types of modules have been produced for the last three or so decades using this kind of technology and are really the mainstay for these very high performance phased arrays. The third type of transmit receive module that is used is a surface mount transmit receive module. It differs from the hybrid microelectronics TR module in, this, in that it uses a printed circuit board with components that are surface mount attached using solder. Those packages have the same kind of functions such as the high power amplifier and the low noise amplifier and the common leg circuit and other functions. It's just that they're fabricated using surface mount technology. It's very common for those kinds of functions to be in things called QFN packages, 
or other surface mount technology. And the printed circuit boards have solder that's deposited onto the top surface. And then the electronic components are auto attached in the various lo locations where they're required. And then that circuit board with those components is then reflowed at high temperature to cause a solder to flow and to cause those components to be permanently attached to the circuit board. And often lids, uh, metal lids, often brass with tin plating is placed over various parts of these printed circuit board TR modules for isolation purposes. The third type of transmit receive module that's used is called the single chip TR module. In this type of TR module, all of the functions, the, amp, the high power amplifier, the low, low noise amplifier, the common leg circuit, and many other functions are integrated into one integrated circuit that is often put into a plastic package that is in surface mount attached to a planar array. The, one of the benefits of this approach, of course, is that it's possible to get very high levels of integration and it's possible to achieve phased arrays at high frequencies in ways and, uh, that you couldn't achieve with uh, other, the other two techniques. Now, what are the benefits and the drawbacks of each? Well, obviously, the hybrid microelectronic tier module has the benefit of being very high reliability. It can also often dissipate uh, power levels out of the high power amplifier that the other techniques are not able to do as easily. That's because te uh, technologies like aluminum nitride ceramics with high thermal conductivity are used, or other methods that use high dissipation and high thermal conductivity metals. The drawback of the hybrid microelectronic approach is that it is expensive. Why? Well, it's because most of those hybrid microelectronic modules are hermetic. The uh, wire bonding process and the die attach process is expensive. The components themselves, the ceramic substrates are used, are expensive also. How about the printed circuit board uh, uh, solder attached uh, mod, TR module? What are its benefits and drawbacks? Well, obviously, one of the benefits is that it's lower cost. Another benefit is that it can be produced using low cost standard manu manufacturing processes, such as solder reflow. Um, you know, one of the drawbacks to it is that it's often large because of the overhead that you have relative to the individual components. Otherwise, it's a very attractive approach to transmit receive modules that I've used many, many times. Actually, I've used all three of these approaches to um, design and implement TR modules into phased arrays. How about the third approach? What are its benefits and drawbacks? Obviously, one of the benefits of the single chip TR module is that it's small, which means you're able to integrate a lot of functionality in this small area and achieve uh, packaging approaches such as panel arrays that are hard to achieve with the other two approaches. And an, another approach, another benefit is that it can be low cost because you only have the cost of that single integrated circuit. Th those costs can be high for even the single integrated circuit. Uh, one of the drawbacks is that it's hard to achieve very high power levels out of these single chip TR modules. So it, it limits the, the applications to, to lower power and for applications like satellites, but it's hard to get enough power out of a single chip TR module for, uh, to achieve requirements for, for instance, for long-range radar or long-range communication systems that require lots of power for, let's say, high data rates. So there you have it. You have, I've described three different types of tier modules. I've described a bit of their benefits and drawbacks. And if you'd like to know more information, then visit our website. Thanks for watching. Next, download my white paper link below. It has visual examples and additional details on transmit receive modules. It also covers why transmit receive modules are essential for your phased array. Also, if you have additional questions about transmit receive modules or to start your own phased array development with the experts here at MPT, then visit our website at mptcorp.com. Until next time, this is Rick Sturdevant with MPT.